Okay, so we're going to start on part three of our uh, digital uh, video series here, uh, Chief Research Officer to Chief Research Officer. And uh, on part one, we talked a little bit of overview of uh, digital, all things digital, um, and kind of uh, the who and how uh, folks in the enterprise are buying uh, digital. Uh, and then uh, two, uh, second video, we talked about procurement and the impact of uh, digital on procurement's evolution. And in this third part of the series, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, digital platforms. Uh, Michael's got some really good insights to share on some of the things that Everest is doing around uh, putting some method demand this in terms of how we look at uh, digital from a platform perspective. So, Michael, um, what did you have to share on this? Yeah, so, so you know, we're kind of back to the conversation of what is digital. And, you know, everybody kind of puts the digital uh, white label on everything mm -hmm. and it wants to kind of talk about, hey, I've got digital. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of go back to the, the days of, you know, I thought we did digital when we got my digital phone back 25 years ago. It felt really good that we went from analog to digital. So one of the things we've done is put together a, a chart that really kind of brings it all together under one, one uh, framework, and we call it our digital capability uh, platform. And as you see on your screen here, what we've done is created a series of, of layers, if you will, uh, the first being the performance layer really focused on the infrastructure, really about driving scalability, driving that overall performance. Mm -hmm. And then we add in the layer of automation. And so it's really part about driving process efficiency. Uh, we've got the process automation, uh, which some people would call uh, RPA. And or uh, workflow or scripting on steroids or digital duct tape. I, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, <laughs> actually got some value propositions that are pretty compelling, so we'll come back to that. Okay. okay. And then we add in the insights layer, which is really trying to drive the, provide the analytics to drive decision making, yeah. and then we bring in the interaction layer. Well, uh, and I'm that, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm glad you don't have just like AI as one little box. I've seen so much, you know, like, oh, here's our AI box, because it, it, it seems like it's all over, you know. Yeah, so AI, we, we thought about putting in one of the layers, and we actually looked at the, 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 the AI is really being contrib contributing to all of the different layers. Yeah. So if we if we add the the interaction layer with the insights and the and the automation and the performance, you really kind of get a whole digital uh, solution set of opportunities. Right. Well, I mean, it's very all encompassing. I guess my main question to you would be like, where do you start? How do you buy the stuff? Do you just start with kind of your objectives and and work backwards, or are there some things that are fixed? You know, other things that are not. What's the best way to approach it, and, and like, how do you buy these things? Well, I mean, I think you gotta you gotta look at your business objectives and start with the the, the business challenge there, and uh, so you always start with that in mind. But if you were to pick one one of the examples here, and it's one that's very very popular in the the, the process automation RPA, if you mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. so you call it digital duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I look at that and say, hey, we're making there's tremendous value being created there. Uh, tr tremendous growth in those companies. They've been evolving. They, they're actually not that new of companies, but over the last two or three years, they've, they've, they've made tremendous inroads into penetrating uh, the enterprise in various sectors. And so, uh, a tremendous opportunity to buy that s software as a standalone, uh, on a standalone basis. And I find it interesting that, you know, the, you know they, they use the, the imagery around a robot or a digital worker, right. or, uh, something along those lines. But um, I think it's indicative of a, of a, of a, a more um, compelling uh, thing that's going on out there. And, and we, I liked, uh, you were talking about earlier about the uh, unicorns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I mean, you mentioned uh, some of the RPA guys. And yeah, as the market seems to have a huge interest in it. And I think maybe one of the things that's interesting is that, is that it's not just kind of helping us with our process automation, let's say in a GBS environment or whatever, and I know the tools are morphing to actually bring a little bit of actually AI into their tool sets versus just um, integration. But hey, just from a procurement standpoint, you know, it's certainly uh, a way to help reduce the cost of your large services engagement because as those, you know, as you move from just the, uh, the labor to more digital, um, you know, I saw one VP uh, talking at a conference and he was able to reduce his BPO spend cut in half because they had moved so heavily into um, RPA and were able to, to move those services digitally as he was then having his BPO provider then move into higher value added activities around analytics yeah. and things like that. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're kind of bringing in the next layer into this conversation. You can buy it as a, as a software point solution. You can buy it as a, an entire layer in the dialogue. And so we've highlighted the, 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 the top layer there, the interaction layer. Right. And you could think about that as a, you know, hey, you could have done it as a call center. Hey, I need people to answer the phones. I need people to talk to my my uh, clients or prospective clients, uh, customers, and uh, 
But now you have an opportunity to create that as an entire uh, interaction in multiple media channels and multiple uh, venues and multiple uh, ways of, of going back and forth with your customers. And so um, the, the call center is probably not even, in, doesn't even really kind of exist in, in, or won't exist as we go forward here, it'll become that interaction layer. So again, it's starting to package those together. Well, you can go long, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, you can add, you can you can go beyond that and start to get into that BPO solution, which is what you're indicating, is which you right. start to package in multiple layers right. into the picture. Yeah, no, it seems like a really valuable kind of backplane or architecture for uh, all the functions and business units to kind of be interacting with IT to say, how do we kind of plug in? Because maybe I've got a SaaS solution that does a little bit of this, but not so much that, or you know, IT is saying, hey, we really want to drive a common RPA or analytics solution, maybe somewhere else it's not as, um, Important, so I think that's really useful. Like the contact center you mentioned, you know, like procurement organizations and other functions are like, well, we want to provide kind of uh, internal stakeholder customer support, you know, to requisitioners and suppliers. Why can't we offer that kind of interaction and service excellence and take that out of IT and GBS and bring it into some of these other functions? So I think it's a really, uh, real valuable um, insight. But I think it's also necessary to get procurement and IT working together. Because they uh, to kind of go to the stakeholders together because you know um, they have a lot of shared interest and, and issues. Both functions are trying to like how do we get out of the the tactical and get into the more strategic. We have issues around shadow procurement, shadow systems, renegade stakeholders, yeah. right? So we're trying to you know work together. Um, yeah. So I look at this and I say you know there you know you can look at this picture and say okay lots of different uh, vendors, lots of different solutions. There's, you know, we can argue about how many vendors are playing in this space. It's going to definitely be in the hundreds, if, if not more. Uh, At least, thousands. But think, then the yeah. next question really becomes, uh, who owns this inside the enterprise? And so that, that actually becomes another whole challenge. You mentioned IT, you mentioned procurement. You can go on to mention the function should be owning this, and they're doing many things around that. And so. Um, you can you can add in the, the the actual GPS or shared services center as another party into this into this mix. And do you see the BPO providers kind of changing their role to kind of be able to bring some of these kind of cool new technologies or just impactful technologies to the the business in kind of a an easy way and through a kind of a, a business process as a service, if you will, kind of approach to yeah. then get some of these technologies as part of that or? Well, that's a potential and, and I think the, the you know, the, the BPO service providers are really ch changing their stories there. So they, mm -hmm. as they moved from labor arbitrage, and we talked to, talked about uh, how they're, uh, who they're interacting with now has become that chief digital officer that becomes one of their, their driving customer uh, t targeting po uh, points. Um, but the other thing is I also point to, and I like to refer to is so if there's lots of different ownership points and lots of different things going on there, I like to refer to it as the digital disaster. That's right. right. And yeah. It's kind of like the SharePoint anarchy, you know, it's like, great, everybody you know, starts erecting all these different sites. It's even, it's that on steroids. It seems like so many different functions. Yeah, you go back just... to the RPA and, you know, hey, you can have somebody in the function doing it. You can have somebody saying, hey, I'd like to, to create a Six Sigma initiative. I'm going to improve it there. I can have somebody in the IT area. And all of a sudden you've got this mass yeah. of implementations that are maybe not the same vendor, not the same terms, not the same pricing, not the same service levels, and right. who's managing the farm, and who's, you know, who's looking after security, and you know, what happens if you know, something bad goes on, um, you know, who's, 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 who, who really owns that? Right, and I think that, that, that is a key piece around kind of supplier management, third-party management, partner management, you call it, around the governance of that, and I think that's an area where procurement and IT are trying to figure out that best way and in GBS to kind of work together. And I know you've got a whole set of services that where you help folks kind of deal with, you know, those types of, you know, supplier governance, partner governance types of issues. Um, but I think one of the big challenges is, great, so we, as you said, you know, we've got hundreds or thousands of vendors in this space. How do we get some intelligence around the best approach to use and then the best, you know, providers to use to kind of come in and, 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 uh, and bring this to our organization? So. I mean, I see so many co companies that are like, well, let's go Google, you know, find some providers and, you know, and, you, and, and that's not necessarily the most robust way to do market intelligence on this, this ecosystem. So, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, at, 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 the, at the highest level, we're starting to ask questions of the service providers. Tell us about not how many FTEs you have in process in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, accounts receivable versus accounts payable versus right. general ledger. But tell us about how you're, you're providing your solutions in the context of these different layers. 
Right, because people are going to want the digital piece at the core, you know, right. with the services wrapped around. So how do you mitigate my digi digital? How do you make my digital disaster become much more rationalized? Right, and be part of the solution rather than the problem. Right, exactly. Right? Makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so okay, so I think we're going to on this next set of the series, we're going to talk um, a little bit more around the how, because we've talked, um, you know, a little bit more about the who and the what. Um, and I think uh, on this next section, we're going to get a little bit into more talking about. Um, digitally enabled services, contingent labor, and and uh, the, the issue around uh, provider intelligence. Yeah, so it's, I think it provides a good example, especially if one of the, the major business issues is the you know the, the already here talent shortage that we're facing, and if right. we can talk about all these different ways of procuring different services. So let's uh, let's let that force uh, video number four. Okay, and we'll, and we'll stop here.